Very few things bring me less joy than outright disliking a movie. And I usually, when I dislike a movie, try to give it a moment, reflect a bit, think, hang on, were there some redeeming things? And try to give a more balanced opinion on something, at least a more informed opinion upon reflection. No, no, just no. I really, really could not find much redeeming of anything anything in this movie it was not for me this one clawfoot sets itself up as a psychological thriller centered around the seemingly ordinary life of a suburban housewife played by francesca eastwood who becomes entangled in a dangerous game of cat and mouse with a manipulative contractor played by milo gibson so right off the bat we have some legacy actors here and not even they can save this movie we are in the home straight we are nearly at 50,000 subscribers i cannot thank you all enough for that so please don't hesitate hit that subscribe button it's free it helps me so much to keep bringing you the content that i think you're enjoying let's get back to the video the film aims to blend elements of suspense dark humor black comedy psychological tension pulling the audience into a story that unfolds within the confined walls of a large to atypical american home at first glance, the premise suggests an intriguing exploration of trust, deception, and the hidden undercurrents of domestic life. That's what the movie's going for, and my god does it fail to deliver on that promise. Movies set in tight, intimate settings like homes and prisons often resonate because they explore our most familiar safe space, being transformed into arenas of fear and confrontation. Audiences are naturally drawn to stories that challenge perceptions of safety and intimacy. Expecting Clawfoot to be an edge-of-your-seat thriller in the, in the tradition of Panic Room or The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Enter with this perception at your own peril. You will be sorely disappointed. While the premise of Clawfoot is promising, the execution leaves a lot to be desired. Despite its potential to captivate and unsettle, the film ultimately falls flat, feeling more like an exercise in missed opportunities. As we delve deeper, it becomes clear that the movie struggles to balance its tone, stumbling in its attempt to create meaningful tension. Though the film features strong actors like Eastwood and Gibson, the question lingers. Can their performances salvage a story that lacks the sophistication and depth we crave from a top-tier thriller? No, they can't. They can't. The direction of Clawfoot by Michael Day attempts to weave a taut claustrophobic atmosphere throughout the film, but unfortunately, the execution feels inconsistent and muddled. Day seems torn between crafting a psychological thriller that genuinely unnerves the audience and delivering a more formulaic, almost melodramatic domestic drama. This indecision is palpable in the film's uneven tone, vacillating between suspense and, and I can't stress this enough, unintentional comedy. There are moments where the film seems to be self-aware, almost tongue-in-cheek in its approach. But these are quickly undermined by awkward shifts to dead seriousness, leaving the viewer unsure of how exactly to feel. The pacing is another critical misstep. Rather than a slow burn that gradually builds tension, Clawfoot often lingers too long on scenes that add little to the plot, stretching thin what could have been a tight, compelling narrative. The result is a film that feels longer than its actual runtime. I, I cannot tell you how many times I find myself just looking down at my watch or checking the runtime bar on the screen a link I was sent, almost praying with the thought of, is it over yet? With numerous scenes that drag instead of driving the story forward, moments that should feel tense and uncomfortable instead come across as sluggish and contrived, betraying the potential energy of the film's initial premise. And the film suffers from an over-reliance on genre cliches. It could almost be an exercise in negative box ticking. From predictable jump scares to the overly dramatic use of shadows, and its music, the film seldom strays from well-trodden paths. Rather than subverting expectations or breathing new life into familiar tropes, Clawfoot falls back on them, making the experience feel derivative and uninspired. The promise of an original take on a psychological thriller becomes a pastiche of better films that have come before it. Now, I would say that Gibson and Eastwood do their best to bring their acting ability to a script which they have very little to work with. 
The problem is, though they're both very competent actors, they have zero on-screen chemistry. None. Zero. Be it, be it in conflict or be it in lust. There is nothing. There, there's nothing going on between them. It, it's, it's uncomfortable how flat they both are acting across each other. Eastwood, known for her ability to bring depth and nuance to her roles, does her best to inject life into the character she plays. Her portrayal is at best competent, occasionally toying with magnetic, but the material she is given lacks the complexity necessary for her to truly shine. She works hard to convey a range of emotions from fear to defiance, but the, the script's shallow characterization and chunky dialogue hinder her efforts. Despite her talent, she is often forced into cliches unable to elevate the character beyond the one-dimensional trope of a damsel caught in distress who then has a little plot twist and the hunter becomes the hunted, each of which she seems unable to play not because of a lack of talent but because of a lack of direction. Visually, Clawfoot does show some moments of flair but they're so few and far between. The cinematography tries to evoke a moody atmosphere with dim lighting, skewed angles and close-up shots, suggesting a descent into madness or paranoia to some level. However, these choices often feel more like a checklist of a standard thriller aesthetic than a deliberate effort to enhance the narrative. And there are equally moments where, where the cinematography just makes even the most passive of movie fans go, huh? The choice of angles, the choice of focal lengths they use, all of this stuff. It, there, there's a scene in particular, uh, the chase scene in the house where Gibson is chasing down Eastwood, where he almost runs off camera, through camera, and off camera again, screaming, I'm a getcha! And it's like, it, it was Scooby Doo levels of silliness. The climax of Clawfoot is emblematic of the film's larger issues. The final confrontation. I guess was intended to be tense, emotion, a tense emotionally charged showdown, but instead it feels hollow and uninspired, and almost reverts to being gore porn, which that didn't go out of fashion ages ago. The stakes which should be at their highest are undermined by a lack of character development and poorly executed pacing that makes the outcome feel both predictable and unsatisfying. The resolution attempts to wrap up loose ends, but the hurried, almost careless approach leaves many questions unanswered and fails to deliver a rewarding conclusion. In the end, Clawfoot leaves the audience more frustrated than fulfilled with a lingering sense that it never quite achieved what it may have set out to do. May have set out to do. Because it's so bad in some places that I do wonder if they ever even had an initial attention. intention. Oh, this hurts me. I hate giving movies bad scores, but I, I, I can't score Clawfoot more than a 2 out of 10. This was painful to get through. It's a film that promises much but delivers little, despite a few moments of visual flair and a relatively talented cast, the movie is weighed down by a lackluster script, predictable plotting and inconsistent tone. The thriller elements feel forced rather than earned, and the emotional core is overshadowed by cliches and contrived dialogue. While Clawfoot may appeal to viewers who enjoy low-budget genre films for their quirks and imperfections, which I'm all for, I'm a big supporter of independent cinema and have often encouraged a very specific viewing habit when, when consuming independent films. You cannot look at it through the same lens with which you consume something like a big budget AAA tentpole blockbuster. You have to be, you, you have to look at an independent film with a certain level of forgivingness, because be it for budget constraints, time constraints, all the restraints that independent films have to go for, you do give them extra allowances. I, I tried. I really tried with this one. It just ultimately fails to rise above its own limitations. It's a missed opportunity for something that could have been potentially more compelling. It just leaves much to be desired. And it just ends up being a largely forgettable entry into the thriller genre. And one I worry that people are going to almost start memeing and be like, if you want to see a bad movie, check out X, check out Y, check out Z, check out Crawford. Which sucks, I hate saying that. But, you know, as an aspiring critic, I've only got my integrity. So, those are my honest thoughts. And uh, if you do 
brace yourselves to see it. It's out on it's out on uh, on demand later this month on September 23rd, I believe it airs. Let me know what you thought of it once you've seen it. Leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Maybe I've missed something. Maybe there's some grand design here that that's completely gone over my head. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and your comments down below. As always, I encourage healthy discussion being nice in the comment section. There's another video for you to, wa uh, for you to watch up here and a subscribe button for you to watch down here. So please go ahead and do all that goodness. And I'll see you soon right here on the Silver Screen Dudes YouTube channel. Bye for now.